Hey there, Patriots. Welcome back to the front line. Steph Watch here to give you guys more intel, singing update, your personal armory, and fight back against the fake news media machine. And today we're going to be discussing this whole Dove and Unreal Engine team up where they say that they're going to boost diversity and change the game. Um, again, more progressive, ambiguous talk. We talked about ESG, E uh, being environmental, S being social. Uh, and G being governance. Now we're going to be talking about the S because a lot of this comes from the S factor, which is social, but a lot of people call it social justice, right? Social virtue signaling. Um, Anything that they can to say is mainly, it all falls in this exact same direction, diversity or promoting a marginalized group of people in order in into a space right kind of just shoving them into the space and pretending that we care so much about them right um but here beauty product dove teams up with unreal engine and women in games to change the game and boast diversity this comes from games radar right uh beauty product dove has launched a new partnership with unreal engine and women in games to create a more representative inclusive environment online what does that mean? Nobody knows. As long as they keep pushing the whole D-I-E, right, diversity, inclusion, equity, that's all they care about. As long as we keep regurgitating that rhetoric, our, that S factor that we're being graded on is going to keep going up, and our ESG rating is going to keep going up. A survey commissioned by the brand sur uh, surmised that despite the fact that women comprise almost half 1.3 billion of the global game community. I have a um, another article to kind of dispute that. 73% of female gamers believe uh, lack of diversity is an issue in games. Again, ambiguous, diversity, right? What, what does that mean? When most people in on progressive left talk about diversity, they mean non-white, right? They mean we need, when they say we need more diversity, they mean we, meet, we need more non-white people, right? Uh, you know, they say that we live in a, uh, white supremacist uh, hegemony, okay, the patriarchy, or you might call it. Um, everything f uh, as far removed from that, right? Look at the founding fathers, white, male, you know, some say cisgendered uh, of Catholic or Protestant uh, belief, diversified them, right? That means we need black people, right? Instead of white, black, instead of Christian, we need atheist or uh, Muslim or Jewish or uh, like uh, Buddhist um, instead of cisgender, we need transgender or non-binary people, right? As diverse as you can get, um, you know, able-bodied people, right? Uh, we need disabled people, people who are neurodivergent, people who are, you know, might have some other type of mental illness or other deformities, right? Um, that's what they claim to be diversity, but it really just seems like, well, okay, what's, you know, that just sounds like a lot of buzzwords because you're not really explaining what's going on, right? This is essentially just another ramification of Gamergate, right? With Anita Sarkeesian, Zoe Quinn, and all their media allies that help poison the well in the gaming spaces, in a lot of pop culture spaces, right? Uh, Anita Sarkeesian with Feminist Frequency, her whole video charade that she tried to do was take other people's uh, gaming content and then claim that, hey, these games are misogynistic and sexist and racist, and these games promote that type of um, ideology to young white men to then go out and do bad things to women and minorities, right? That was the whole structure of a lot of these, of all of Gamergate, really. That's what they were trying to push. And, uh, and they won. They, they were successful, despite how hard people in Gamergate tried to fight back against that. They had, you know, you already had like legacy media, CNN, Fox News, MSNBC. They already didn't like video games. They were, they were constantly trying to push that video games uh, were uh, the reason why kids were grown up violent, why a lot of school shootings and all this other crap was happening because violent movies, violent video games that get in the hands of kids that tells them to go out and do those things, right? So when a uh, progressive feminist start invading these spaces and saying that, hey, um, these video games are also teaching, you know, men how to be racist towards minorities, especially white men, race to be racist towards minorities and how to be sexist against women, right? Of course, legacy media definitely, you know, grabbed them and said, hey, come on our show and talk about how evil these video games are, right? And so again, destroyed pop culture, destroyed, um, you know, the whole video game space and all these so-called video game journalist spaces openly encourage that, right? It, completely disgusting. 
Uh, it also concluded that 60% of girls and women feel the current lack of diversity in avatars and characters have a negative effect on their self-esteem. How? Like, explain. I need explanations on how any of this, what, what does any of this mean, right? While 74% wishing characters in video games look more like women in real life. You know, it, it's, again, just another a bunch of buzzword nonsense that nobody really knows. Like, who are they actually asking? Are you just asking these four women and saying, oh, well, all women feel the same way, right? Let's watch this video, right? They say two out of three female gamers in the U.K., right? Now, this is just the U.K. say there's a lack of representation in video games, okay? Había dos personajes, mujeres, nada más. Los dos eran dos personajes super sexualizados. Y nada, eran las dos opciones que tenía para, para elegir. Right, complaining about over-sexualized women because, you know, she's not... We're not there. You know. We don't exist. The things are not made for you. I don't look like... Right, she complains about, you know, these games aren't made for you, right? Hey, I remember leftists constantly say that about... Uh, say that to people who disagree with movies, right? Uh, Seamus from Freedom Tunes just had a, a really good video release about... Um, it was the new Ariel movie that came out and all the characters um, in that short were telling this guy that, hey, this movie's not made for you, right? You guys, you just need to understand that. It, it's again. Like that. Not everyone looks like that. We should really show everybody that who we really are as people and we should all you know, like have a chance. A character that looks like me in a video game and be like, Yo, this baby's fire. <laughs> there are thousands of skins available to choose from. But finally, one that looks like mine. Oh, I look so badass. It's not only about self-esteem, it's about what you can or cannot do with your life. I don't no, know, I forgot that. We got that. We are different. It's beautiful. I think it's, it's a dream. <laughs> Is there anything more powerful than being a legend? Yes, being real. So the irony of that is like being real. It's like, well, they're all none of it's real. It's all virtual video games, right? nobody's using powers in real life nobody's like crashing through billboards on a motorcycle and surviving that okay it, again it's all a bunch of nonsense what is dove going to do really they're there to sell skincare products okay they're not a video gaming company unreal engine is a is they're not kind of a video game company they have you know they use their um in, a lot of games use their engine and they're constantly developing um different type of simulations for I believe they work in, they're doing something with the uh, American government. Um, I remember seeing a um, an ad for some some project they were doing. Um, but anyway, you know, gender bias. Forty nine percent of women play mobile games, but few games are made for women. Right? It's they're they're mobile games. Right? Again, where are you getting these, these uh, statistics from? Right? Well, who who cares about mobile games? People don't like mobile games, and the mobile games that these women are playing are Candy Crush. Right? There was a um, article that used to be getting pushed around saying that, well, 60% of video gamers, uh, of gamers are women, right? But yet there's a huge underrepresentation for female, uh, females in video games in general, right? And when people actually looked at the study, where they got that number from, well, they boasted a whole bunch of women who play mobile games. And what was the mobile game that in specific that they were playing? Uh, Match 3. Match three is Candy Crush. It's games that you sit there while you're on the toilet or at the doctor's office or at work and you're just bored as you're waiting for a client or something else to be to get done. You just sit there on your phone swiping and just, you know, using your dumb to match up three uh, colors in a row and getting points as fast as you can before the timer runs out. Right. That's all that is. So they use that data to heavily skew this to say, oh, well, 60 percent of gamers are women. But you know, most of these women are playing mobile games, as they now admit here in this article. But they're mobile games, right? They're again, mobile games are Candy Crush, Match Three. Most mobile games don't really have an actual avatar. They're just like um, Clash of Clans or 
whatever these other mobile games that are constantly being advertised by different YouTubers and crap like that. Nobody cares about those games. People make fun of those games. Those aren't, you know, real gamers don't consider those as actual uh, games. But another thing that we constantly been seeing, again, going back to the uh, feminist frequency issue is that, you know, complain about the sexualization or the over sexualization of female characters, even though we know that when you look at a lot of these male characters in these vi same video games, they're all shirtless, buff as heck, right? Well, we don't agree with that because these are unreal beauty standards. It's like, well, again, looking at the men, right? Going back and looking at movies, right? What were all these big movies with Dwayne Rock Johnson, Bruce Lee, Sylvester Stallone, right? All these guys are ripped, okay? 80s, 90s action movie heroes, right? Early 2000s, you know, still going on. You still have a lot of guys who are buff, in shape, Right. No guy. Like, where's the guys at? Where's the men who are out here complaining that, oh, well, I feel depressed because I don't look like these uh, these actors. Right. They're they're not here. They're they're because they people men realize that, hey, if I want to look good, I need to go to the gym. Right. However, for some reason, when it comes to women, it's oh, well, I don't feel represented, uh, you know, feel represented in this video game. So let me go to the nearest media outlet or nearest uh, whatever and then get advertised in some random survey that, you know, heavily skews in a bias uh, to attack the whole entire community. It, it, like, that's how you alienate yourself, right? I, I don't, you know, like, what's going on, right? League of Legends, uh, Renata challenges the industry standards for female character design, right? This is why um, the new Fable uh, game that's coming out, a lot of people are trashing on the uh, male female character there because i mean they look ugly Th these characters look ugly and it's deliberate because they want to destroy what they call the male gaze right this is going back you know we're going back to 2013 2012 again when uh the whole gamergate community started anita sarkeesian started feminist frequency as kind of like a little docu series where she just um takes other people's uh game content put it up on screen it says hey, this is problematic because these women are uh, are too sexualized. Having women on screen that are overly sexualized encourage men to go out and commit what is called, uh, well, essentially what they call it is a, a culture of sexually assaulting women. And so the only way to combat that is, you know, they say right here, the male gaze, which refers to the lens through which mostly white heterosexual men are viewing the world in a lens of entitlement. It's entitlement to all the privileges awarded to gazers, entitlement to view women and even touch them and to discuss and exploit their bodies without consequence. And although surely not all young men are potential assaulters, this kind of entitlement absolutely contributes to that type of culture. OK, this is how it all started. This is why um, you're constantly getting, you know, it, it, it just boils down to a hey, if you're a. A uh, heterosexual male, especially a white heterosexual male, if you find anything attractive, um, we're going to attack that as being part of the patriarchal uh, society that is encouraging a uh, a culture of assault. Okay, but the thing is, as a black heterosexual male myself, I'm like, well, I, well that leads. Well, I don't want to see like ugly women on screen either, right? I want to see movies with hot, sexy women, right? Why can't I see that? Well, because you say that white men are going to go out and assault women because of it. No, that's bull crap. I don't believe that. Right. And now I'm here being you know, shown, uh, you know, not attractive women. I'm not allowed to play video games with, uh, you know, uh, with attractive women in it. No, I'm not. You know, I'm, I'm going to go to Japan because that's where the good games are now being made. That's where the good content is being made. That's why in comic books and Marvel DC, you're starting to see a lot of the female characters being drawn very ugly, right? They're being drawn very ugly, very manly. And it's just disgusting. I don't, it's like, I want to see, you know, I want to read a good story, but I also want to see like, uh, at least some, uh, some type of attractive women, right? Because again, all the men in these movies, right? They, they're still buff. A lot of the men are still buff, still fit. Henry Cavill, right? He's still uh, buff. You know, all these other actors, you know, Chris Hemworth, uh, Hugh Jackman. Yeah, they're still acting. They're still buff. But yet, for some reason, it's, oh, well, having women uh, who are skinny, fit, 
attractive in your movie well you're just a misogynist sexist engaging in um that type of uh assault culture right this you know it's like no i'm not gonna buy if if you want to keep sitting here and saying that to me then i'm just not gonna buy your movies i'm not gonna watch anything that you produce i'm gonna take my money to japan or somewhere else and uh, consume their content as we are now seeing manga is taking over uh comic books in america right most people i talk to they read comic books but they read manga most of the time okay so again you know this is from cnn how female photographers are deflecting the male gaze right because th again this is not a new phenomenon this is something that has been constantly re-emerging ever since the gamergate era and how it has been seeping well it first came through you know dirt wave feminism and then how they found different avenues in order to uh invade different subcultures and push the these um type of ideas right and they even go as far as say hey how white supremacy and capitalism influence beauty standards and this is teen vogue right this is a uh a magazine a uh you know what's it called celebrity gossip tabloid for teenagers and they're even pushing this type of craziness okay so at the end of it all is again all of this, you know, Dove and um, Unreal Engine, they're doing it for ESG points, right? They're doing it for social justice activity points. So their ESG score goes up and their investors keep, you know, when their next um, ESG score comes out next year, the investors will sit there and say, hey, your ESG score is still in the green. We can st we'll keep investing in your company, right? That's all that is. That's why they're doing it. But as far as is any of this going to really address any of the issues? Are we really going to get any information on what 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 women in these spaces, in these pop culture subcultures um, are actually feeling alienated? Right. Uh, you know, it, it, we'll probably never know. We'll never know until we actually confront these people who are in charge of these studies and actually get them to release the full studies and say, so we can sit here and comb through it like we did again when um, they claimed that, well, 60 percent of all female uh, of all gamers are female. And it was like, well, let's look at the actual study. Let's look at, let's look at the actual data. Well, most of those women are playing match three games. Match three games on mobile games are literally candy crush. Most people don't consider that as you're not a gamer, right? You're not a gamer if you play a match three game, a game that you literally just sit there, swipe on your phone because you're on the toilet or at a doctor's office or you're bored at work. Okay? So, like always, stay safe, stay sane, be vigilant, and I'll see you patriots on the front lines.